All right, guys. I just woke up from a dream. I had to share. I had to share. For some reason, even though I went through the steps to delete this YouTube channel, it's still here, it's still standing. Maybe it's fate now that I come back to you to share this little tidbit of, of dream knowledge, knowledge, wisdom from the dream world. <laughs> now I have, uh, I have a narcolepsy and that comes with some interesting symptoms, uh, some interesting sleep anomalies. You know, one of which is lucid dreaming and vivid, very vivid dreams and very long dreams. Okay. I can get into REM sleep like that. Okay. And I can stay in REM sleep for a long time too, especially if I'm quite tired. All right. So my dreams I feel like the longer longer they go, uh, the crazier and more vivid they get. But you know what, man? You know, narcolepsy is no joke. But I think it is a blessing for me sometimes, okay? I think about, uh, you know, I'm not, obviously I'm just some fucking, you know, white dude. I'm like, you know, half Italian, half Irish. But think about Native Americans or aboriginal peoples and uh the way they treated dreams and the way they treated people who who had this gift of vivid and lucid dreaming you know these people were like shamans and you know they they put a lot a lot of thought into like you know what what are what are these dreams like what do they mean you know and they gave, they gave attributed value, great value, even religious value, to to analyzing dreams like this. <clears throat> My dreams aren't that fucking serious, but <laughs> I do have fun analyzing these things. I'm gonna share you guys a little dream I had. Uh, it was very elaborate and long, but at the end. Was, was like a little tidbit of knowledge that I woke up from. I was like, holy shit. I gotta, I gotta come back and share this. So in this dream, it was a little further into the future. And I was, for some reason, training uh, in Thailand, Muay Thai with Bokau, right? If you don't know who that is, look him up. Uh, one of the most popular and successful Muay Thai kickboxers out of Thailand. You can spell his name B U A K A W. And this guy has, you know, fought since he was like eight years old or something. And he's maybe 36 or 7 now. Had probably, I can look this up later to be sure, but something around 300 fights under his belt. Pretty insane. Sorry, just woke up some like stretching and stuff. <laughs> anyway, the dream of training of this guy, rather fun, sparring and stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm like asking questions and stuff and uh, about martial arts and how he trains and what he tells me is, you know, amateurs, <laughs> amateurs worry so much about their training and they hyperanalyze everything. He says, this is what professionals do. 
<laughs> and he just does like this <laughs> and like laughs. <laughs> and he says, professionals just, they drink champagne. <laughs> I have no idea if the real Baca would say something like this, but I thought it was funny. And that's when I woke up. And I thought about it, and I was like, you know what? There's some truth to that. You know, it's, you know, the end of a long, silly, fictional dream. There is some wisdom there. <clears throat> Thinking about, you know, there's, there's all kinds of dudes like this. Think about, uh, God, this is, there's this climbing documentary, um, I think it's called The Real, none of the real thing, or so that's the British one. Oh, Rampage, yeah, there's a climbing, a bouldering documentary called Rampage, which is really fucking cool, so check it out if you haven't yet. I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube in full. Um, it's from, like, the late 90s, I believe. Or maybe the early 2000s. Can't quite remember, but... Stars uh, Chris Sharma and Friends. And, you know, there's a really amazing climber named O.B. Forget his last name. Big guy. Unusually large dude for a climber. Just, you know, the back the size of, like, a freaking bodybuilder's just insane strength. The guy looks like he weighs probably 180 pounds or something, but... He's climbing, like, fucking V14 or whatever. <laughs> Professional level stuff. It's a friend of Chris Charm. You know, Chris, pretty, pretty regular looking climber. He's, you know, <laughs> skinny, skinny dude. And, you know, there's a scene where they're traveling around in their little, uh, little van or whatever. Their little RV. And OB is, you know, <laughs> he's getting upset because they haven't, they haven't bouldered in a few days. They've been kind of like chilling and stuff. And he's like, I'm fucking tired of chilling, man. We gotta get out of there. We gotta fucking climb, man. <laughs> and he was like, he was like losing his shit because Chris is just so chill and he's like relaxing. It's like, I don't really feel like climbing yet. I mean, <laughs> And meanwhile, it would be just like going to fucking berserk because he, he feels like they're they're being lazy or something. And they're not being they're not being real climbers, I guess. And uh, at the end of it, you know, this dude OB ends up. Uh, this is not in the documentary, but this is what happened in real life. The dude OB uh, basically couldn't take couldn't take the pressure. Uh, of trying to make it as a professional climber. <laughs> Ended up getting the drugs, alcohol, stuff like that, sort of that for a long time. And then eventually, uh, once he got sober and you know, with the help of some friends, got into a coaching position uh, and ended up coaching, you know, some of the world's best climbers today. Very, very cool story. But, uh, he spoke about how he took things way too seriously, how uh, he always kind of like over again, overanalyzed things really <laughs> too aggressively would get into like training or climbing or whatever. Uh, meanwhile, people like Chris Sharma would kind of just show up and do what they do and kind of just Keep on doing that, keep on showing up, keep on enjoying themselves. You know, like Bacchus says, professional does this. <laughs> Sips their champagne. Uh, and I think, you know, a lot of a lot of really successful professionals are like this. I was also listening to <clears throat> a podcast. There's another instance. <clears throat> of this, like, professional attitude, right? Listen to a podcast a while back with um, a climber that was describing hanging out with Adam Andre, who's, you know, one of the best climbers in the world, if not the best. 
climber ever. Uh, and he was shocked that every night, you know, even on weekdays, that he hung out with Adam. Adam would drink, you know, have like maybe three or four beers every every single night, and he was shocked, almost appalled that like such a high level professional would uh you know, be poisoning himself with this alcohol or whatever, like, doesn't that, in his mind, he's like, that's so, like, undisciplined. You know, how, how could he do this? And Adam just says, no, oh, just do it to relax. I like to relax, I like to have fun at night. You know? Maybe, maybe he needed that. You know, maybe he needed to have that attitude. Maybe, maybe real... Real professionals need the attitude of, let me just shit me up, sip my champagne, and enjoy, enjoy myself. I've been doing that, my phone's about to die, so I'm going to finish up real quick. I've been doing that lately, you know, this little break took from YouTube. Uh, it was supposed to be a permanent break, but apparently I'm back. <laughs> been doing that lately, I've been enjoying climbing, I've been enjoying life. Uh, not taking things seriously, and I gotta say, guys, uh, it's been working out for me so far. I'm gonna keep doing it. Feel stronger than ever, have more endurance than ever, and things are things are great in my life lately. Uh, I think we gotta chill out, guys. I think we gotta just enjoy ourselves, <clears throat> show up, and just have fun. It's just fucking livid. You know what I mean? That's a little dream wisdom. Wisdom from the dream world from you, for you. <laughs> anyway, y'all take care. I'm going to continue to wake up, drink some water, take a piss, eat some breakfast. Peace out. All right, it wouldn't be a true Dope Jangles rambling video if it didn't come back, have me say goodbye. And talk some more. <laughs> Got my bowl of Cheerios and cinnamon right here. Classic breakfast. <laughs> so I do want to say, uh, to elaborate on this topic, what I'm not saying is <laughs> to, uh, to start like a drinking habit <laughs> or something, you know? But what I am saying is uh, relaxing is a good thing. You know, we should put our energy into the training, energy into doing whatever it is that we do. The rest of our time, man, needs to be, I think it needs to be chill, you know? Mmm. Good ass cereal. Let's stop for a second. <laughs> the great late Bruce Lee once wrote It's not about the daily increase, but the daily decrease, guys. You know, if you're doing any kind of physical training, it's, it's stress. It's stress in your body. It's stress in your mind. Any, anything else other than that is going to just cause more, more stress to yourself. Okay? So we got to find a way to decrease, decrease the stress. Okay, that way the body and the mind recover. So the next day we can do it again. Okay. I thought about another <laughs> another athlete who notoriously <laughs> did things that some people thought were unbecoming of an athlete. And this is uh, the most decorated Olympian of all time, Michael Phelps. You know, the swimmer. <laughs> And notoriously, this dude 
fucking was like a stoner, smoked weed all the goddamn time. And yet he was beating world records like like it was a walk in the park. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think, man, the unfortunate reality, and I'm not telling you this to, you know, to, to upset you or anything, or to uh, knock anybody's effort, but I think the reality, guys, is that some people are just born talented, you know? Some people are born with the innate ability to succeed at their sport or whatever it is they do. Um, and part of that success might be their ability to get the job done and then the rest of the day just do whatever the hell they want to do and get it out of their mind. But some people, maybe they got to, you know, like at an Andre, drink a couple of beers with friends. That's how they chill and, you know, are able to de stress. Michael Phelps liked to party <laughs> and get high as hell. <laughs> uh, that is the daily decrease that Bruce Lee is talking about, you know? De stressing. I think if you're really serious at whatever sport you're doing, you've got to have that ability. The ability to kind of put the put the hard effort in and enjoy it and then just let it go. The rest of the day just let it go. And if you are somebody who who likes to, you know, really program their training and analyze what they're doing. <laughs> That's fine, but maybe maybe try to either have an allotted amount of time where you do that. Maybe spend like half an hour or something every day thinking about that. And then, you know, throw it away. Get it out of your mind after that, that half an hour or whatever is over. Or simply hire a coach to worry about it for you. <clears throat> you know what I mean? You think Michael Phelps programmed his own training? Fuck no, the guy had like five coaches. <laughs> you know? I don't know if he had five exactly, but I'm sure he had a team of people that worried about that for him. And they probably knew he was smoking, smoking mad, <laughs> smoking mad marijuana. They're like, yeah, dude, whatever do we gotta do to get these damn gold medals? <laughs> um, and again, I'm, I'm obviously not encouraging anybody to, to drink or do drugs, but <laughs> it's not at all the point of this video. But, uh, yeah, man, think about Think about that daily decrease, guys. It's not about the daily increase, but the daily decrease. Think about how you can ease up on yourself. And if you're really serious about something, you know, to do with sports or whatever, maybe hire somebody else to, to worry about that for you. I don't give a fuck to. You know what I mean? Because I don't, you know, the reality is I'm like 33 years old. I have a problem with authority. I have known this by myself since I was like 12, you know? And I don't like people telling me what to do. So there's no way in shit I'm gonna hire a coach myself because that's gonna stress myself out. <laughs> it wouldn't work for me. Maybe it'd work for you. You know? Maybe it'd work for you. Something to think about.
the daily decrease. Anyway, guys. Mmm. You gotta enjoy yourself. If you're not enjoying what you're doing, you're not gonna succeed at it. That's for damn sure. You'll succeed at stressing yourself out. So that's the most important, man. Sip your champagne, celebrate life. Fucking live the dream, dude. Mmm. <laughs> anyway, hope you all are doing well. This has been yet another Dope Shangles rambling video. I haven't been on YouTube in a minute. My goal is to spend way less time on it. But I think it will start posting videos every now and then. Because why not? You know? Like, as long as I'm enjoying it, right? And not stress myself out. I kind of miss y'all, man. I kind of miss the community. So I'm a freaking holler, y'all. Check out some of your videos. See what's been going on. <clears throat> anyway, I'm gonna finish my cereal. Start my day. Y'all take care. Peace out. Now we ship champagne when we thirsty. Uh.